All right, so hello, everybody. Um, my name is David Dean Botrell, and I'm one of the instructors at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And um, I teach several things here. I teach advanced acting, but I also teach camera work and auditioning and so forth. And we're gonna do a little bit of work on the concept of camera acting, which is a little bit different than being in a play um, or even acting in an acting class, actually. Uh, and I'm gonna be working here with Hannah and with Henry. And uh, although I'm a, a little familiar with Hannah and Henry from seeing them around the academy, I actually have never had them as acting students before. So this is kind of a new thing for all of us here. So I just want to quickly ask you guys, have, have you, I'm sure you probably studied some camera work with like Jennifer Mann, who's also a really wonderful actor and uh, teacher here at the academy. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to start off by talking a little bit about the difference between acting for a camera and acting on stage. Because uh, although there's some fundamental truths that are, that are always reliable about any kind of acting you're gonna do, there are a couple of like adjustments that we have to make to act for camera. And I'm just gonna um, uh, quickly tell you that like um, when, I, when I first um, started, I was a stage actor. And in those, back in the olden times, there really were no camera classes for actors. They just kind of threw you out. They trained you to be a Broadway star and they threw you out there. And then when you had your first camera audition, you really had no idea how to do that. And so uh, you had to kind of educate yourself a bit. And one of the first things that I learned about camera acting, or I should say the, the most important thing that I learned about camera acting was that it is always going to feel different than stage acting does. Meaning a lot of people, when I first introduced them to some of the principles of, of camera acting, they say, it, it doesn't feel like acting. It, like, I didn't feel like I was acting. I just, I, I'm not sure how that felt, but it, like, it felt like I was talking to the person and we were in like some kind of special kind of private place, but I didn't, it didn't really feel like it usually feels when I'm on a stage or in front of an acting class. And that is a very common experience because it is different. And the big difference is that when you act on stage or you act in an acting class, there is this wonderful thing called an audience. And they are, they are present. There's a particular place that those chairs are and they don't usually move. Uh, so when you're performing, you are aware of where they are. And some part of us, you know, instinctually sort of turns out so they can see us in a certain way or uh, a, a part of us adjust our volume to make sure that the people in the back row or the people in the balcony, if there is one, can hear us and see us. And there's quite a lot of expansive room on that stage that we are kind of encouraged to fill because we want to sort of entertain on, this, on the scale of this, of this either auditorium or this room, that, this classroom that we're in. Does that make sense to you guys? What I said just then? Okay, great. And, uh, and that all is really fun. And also if you're doing a funny scene or even sometimes a serious scene, the audience is gonna laugh. And when that happens, we wait for them. We actually pause for them. And sometimes we kind of, because it's our job, especially on stage, to kind of help them understand the story we're telling. Sometimes we give them a few little pointers. Like we sort of, we, we, we sort of uh, explain it to them a little bit. And when you work in camera, um, the biggest and best and easiest adjustment I can tell you is that there is no audience. So therefore, um, if I were talking on a stage right now, I'd be talking like this. I'd be using my big stage voice. But if I did that in a camera scene, if like the three of us were in a camera scene and I was saying, good morning, how are you today? That would look absurd. Do you know what I mean? That would just look insane. All of the things that are required of us, all the energy that it takes to kind of do a stage performance and get it out there, none of that is required with a camera because in camera, the audience comes to you. The camera comes to you. It's not that far away to begin with, but with the magic of a, of a lens, they can sort of zoom in on you and get really quite close. And so you don't, your performance only has to travel as far as the other actor, like maybe two, three feet and back. And that, and it, it's, so it's kind of a new reality. You also don't have to work in a proscenium arch, like I always have to be turned a certain way so the audience can see me. I can turn my back and walk across the room in a camera scene because a camera scene is created and filmed in a 365 degree room, usually. So 
there is always plenty of time and to reshoot it and shoot it, reshoot it. So that you, it's going to, you're going to be seen from all different sides in that sort of thing. And you'll just do that scene over and over again, take by take. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to say is, so there's no audience. And thing two is camera acting, the intimacy of camera acting is really the art of it. It's the art of having a conversation as accurately and truthfully as you can um, with a crew of 40 people and three cameras pointed at you. But the goal is to pretend that there's nobody there, that it's just you and the other person. The other thing I will say about um, camera acting, and this is actually true about all acting, but it's particularly true in camera acting, is um, so the scenes are kind of short compared to what we do in plays. Uh, in plays, there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of amping up and a lot of explaining and then things start happening and all that, but there's a lot of talking. It's a lot about language. It's a real writer's medium. And in television and film, the scenes are considerably shorter and we don't talk as much, which means that the talk that we actually do have to handle is very important. It's very, it's usually very charged and it moves kind of fast, meaning whatever the business is of the scene, we have to really, really kind of be on top of it and listen so that we can hear all those little shifts because they tend to happen pretty quickly. Um, like I said, the scenes are not long and, the scene, and in a television or a film production, um, what we're doing is moving that story along. So pretty much almost every beat of what comes out of us is gonna be a new, a little change that's moving us towards something or away from something, or it's, it's definitely taking us somewhere. We're never sort of stationary in a scene. Now, so I say all of that <laughs> because uh, we're gonna now do a little uh, rehearsal of a scene that you guys have worked on a little bit. I, you have worked on it, right? Awesome, awesome, great. Um, and I have actually not seen this scene on purpose because I wanted to sort of watch it fresh when you guys do it. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of feedback on that about how we might be able to maybe sharpen it up for um, an actual camera to shoot it. So if you guys are ready, I'm just gonna turn off my camera here on Zoom and I'll let you guys have the screen and then uh, I will pop back in once you're done. Sound like a plan? Good. Okay, okay. I'll be right back. Next. Break a leg. Um, hello. What are you doing at my desk? Um, hello. Uh, what are you doing on manbuns.com? Well, I'm sure Miss Slater will be very interested to hear some of your after-hour activities. Wilhelmina and I have no secrets. She knows everything about me and I know everything about her. Uh-huh. So she told you I was going to be here? Of course. Of course. Because you both share everything, like two gossipy little schoolgirls braiding each other's hair. So cute. Oh, since you're up, can you grab me a chai tea latte? The break room is 20 paces down the hall to the left, sweetheart. Yeah, the espresso machine is broken, sweetheart. So you're going to have to run over to the coffee house on 43rd and Lex. Oh, ask for Lance. He knows just how I like it. I don't like you. I really, really don't like you. Are you going to answer the phone? Wilhelmina Slater's office. Hello, Willie. Did you know Emily is... Uh-huh. Uh-huh, of course. Goodbye. And make sure Lance adds just the lightest sprinkle of cinnamon. That's the scene? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, and that's from Ugly Betty, correct? I was actually on Ugly Betty a few years ago <laughs> in the small world that we uh, that we all live in here. Okay, that's a nice choice. Um, uh, I want to uh, talk for a second about um, a couple other things um, that we're going to sort of really incorporate in this scene this time. And uh, the first one is something I'm sure that you've heard about in other acting classes, but is uber super duper important in camera acting, which is listening. Um, and it, as you all know, whenever a character comes into a scene, there's something that they want. 
uh, even if it's something as simple as to be left alone. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just try to do my thing. And then all of a sudden someone comes in and they're like, you know, interrupting me. And then very quickly things get a little more complicated after that. But how, how that all kind of fits together, especially for camera work is when we listen, um, we got to listen like an, like an artist. And I'm sure you've heard lots of talk about listening in your acting classes, but, and you've heard the Meisner stuff about listening, but I'm going to add this to it. Okay. Um, in the real world, uh, people generally listen um, as a way of protecting themselves. Like they, they're, they're listening like as a kind of a cautionary thing, like, oh, don't get too close to me. Don't, don't, you know, mess with me in some way. Uh, don't interrupt me. Don't slow me down. I don't want to get involved in your business. And in the world of acting, one of the things that we learn to do as actors is to completely flip that so that when we listen, uh, and it has to be sort of like a button that we turn on in our head. When we listen, it's kind of the opposite thing. It's like the gates come open so that whatever, if I'm in a scene with one of you, um, I need to be listening in such a way that if you say something um, that indicates that, gee, I had this one plan and you now have a new plan, that I'm open, that I notice it. Like, I, not only do I notice it, but I allow myself to be affected by it. And that is the key word is allow. I let it happen. I don't force it to happen. I just realize, oh my goodness, you just got in my way. Well, what can I do about that? Maybe I can try this. Oh, well, now you just did a counter move of some kind. And on, the only way I'm ever going to know that is by listening. And when somebody comes in and uh, is either sort of questioning our authority, as you are questioned, Hannah, or if somebody comes in and tries to exert authority on someone, like what is happening to you, Henry, you really never sort of lose awareness of that person once that happens. Does that make sense? You know, even when the phone call is happening, you're still keenly aware that someone is watching you have this phone call, even if you turn away from them. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the high beams are on, you're in the spotlight. Now, similarly, um, if you are accepting, if you're trying to become the boss here, then the same thing is true. You're looking for any little indication, you know, that someone is either tricking you or sidestepping you or misbehaving or not uh, doing as you have instructed them to do. And if you see that happen, then you allow that to change how you, I don't know, respond to them or what, what your next kind of move is gonna be on the chessboard. Does that sound like something kind of fun to do? Yeah. Okay, it's really fun to do. And I'm gonna say that uh, it's it the less it feels like acting and the more it feels like something that is intensely personal, happening between you and the other actor, that there is some kind of gnarly, kind of like very private conversation happening here in which there's a kind of a real struggle happening. There's like, it's very clear that when we get it to what feels like that, that it's, it feels like it's so personal that you feel a little attacked or so personal that you feel like you, you have to defend yourself in some way, then, then you're getting a little closer to that kind of intimacy that I'm talking about. It's almost, this. A, it's a weird way to say it, but it's like, it's almost as if, um, you're, you're, you're like literally, you know, lying like at a campfire, you know, and it's like, you know, sleeping bag next to sleeping bag, your faces are so close, you know, that you can actually have this very kind of intimate exchange and really watch each other for any little changes that happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. All right. So Henry, mm -hmm. at the top of this, I'm assuming you were not planning on somebody just dropping in at the end of the day, you know, uh, and that you had a little time to sort of, you know, amuse yourself. Uh, which all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of discovered, which is all, you know, is very alarming, particularly if it's something that's, you know, private and you don't want somebody to see, uh, that's going to sort of change you immediately, kind of put you on a kind of an alert. Mm -hmm. Similarly, Hannah, if you're kind of sneaking up on somebody, then there's kind of a fine art of sort of sneaking up and waiting till they just embarrassed enough to go, hello. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Hi, what you doing? Really, do you do this a lot? Do you do this a whole lot? Really? Does your boss know about that? Do you mean there's an opportunity to be very kind of um, intimate with what you do? Because microphones and cameras allow us to do that. We can really perform in a much different way. Uh, uh, and so I'm going to get out of the way now. And I know I just kind of gave you a kind of a new way of coming at this because you seem to understand what's going on the scene. But I want you to kind of think about adjusting the technique of it a little bit more because it's going to feel much more personal. Okay, so let me get out of the way. Don't feel like you have to like talk loud to each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
but <laughs> by all means, be keenly aware of the tiniest little thing you see and let it affect you, let it change you, let it make you mad, let it scare you, let it piss you off, whatever happens, happens. Okay, let me get out of the way and you guys can have another crack at that, okay? <clears throat> Um, hello? What are you doing at my desk? Mm, hello? What are you doing on manbuns.com? I'm sure Miss Slater will be very interested to hear some of your after-hour activities. Wilhelmina and I have no secrets. She knows everything about me, and I know everything about her. Uh-huh. So she told you I was going to be here? Of course. Of course. Because you both share everything. Like two gossipy little schoolgirls braiding each other's hair. So cute. Oh, since you're up, can you grab me a chai tea latte? Mm. Break room is 20 paces down the hall to the left, sweetheart. Yeah, the espresso machine is broken, sweetheart. So you're going to have to run over to the coffee house on 43rd and Lex. Ask for Lance. He knows just how I like it. I don't like you. I really, really don't like you. Aren't you going to answer the phone? Wilhelmina Slater's office. Oh, hi, Willie. Did you know Emily is... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Of course. Goodbye. And make sure Lance adds just the lightest sprinkle of cinnamon. Very nice. How'd that feel? Much more intimate. Mm. Much more. It didn't, it felt the difference between doing it on stage and the difference between doing it just with the other actor. It's a big it, difference, huh? How'd it feel for you, Henry? It affected me a lot more. Like I was like, it was so much more personal. Like everything, like the first time I felt like I could just brush it off, whatever. But this time it was like actually hitting and I felt, I felt the actual charge. So that was interesting to feel and play out in the scene. It's fun, huh? It's very fun. Um, I, I, I will tell you, the last thing I want to, because this is obviously just kind of a short little, you know, uh, sampler of <laughs> the work that we do with camera stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously, we were doing this full out, you guys would uh, have some, you know, some furniture and some props and actually be standing up and moving and when you when it's indicated in the script and all that. But this is just a little sort of beginner thing that we do sometimes to get people started in realizing that once you get sort of, once you kind of understand the framework of camera, it's very fun. It's actually very, very fun to do as stage is very fun to do, but there's some things you can do on a camera that you, it's very hard to do on stage because you can do very small, very personal things. And if you want to do something that's a little, um, I'm going to use the word layered, meaning that there's kind of two things going on at the same time. Uh, in your head, which is happens in life all the time, uh, where you're, you know, you're sort of like trying to sort of say, I'm going, this is what I'm going to do. And this is the game plan. And this is what we're going to, this is my final word on this. While inside your head, you're going, this is terrible. This is a terrible idea. The ship is going down. Why am I even saying this? You can actually kind of play those sort of things uh, on camera because it, it sees you, anything you hide on camera, like if I don't want people to see that I'm scared, I don't want people to see that I'm nervous or that I'm angry. It, the camera sees it anyway, mm -hmm. which is kind of great. It's like really interesting kind of, um, I don't know, I'm gonna go again saying multi-layered work, which is not unlike what we do in real life all the time, every day of the week. So it's really fun. Um, the last thing I'm gonna say about um, this, uh, it, just as a sort of a reminder for the future is in addition to listening, um, we do have to kind of know, I shouldn't say kind of know, we need to specifically know, uh, what the goal is when we start a scene, you know? Be here's why, because uh, camera acting, like any kind of acting, like if you're in a play, 
you're going to do that play. If, you, if it's a you know, professional production, you're going to do eight performances a week. That's a lot of shows. And in order to keep those shows alive, um, you have to kind of wipe the slate clean at the beginning of each performance and walk out there to get something. Mm -hmm. And then you listen and the other actor gets in the way and all of a sudden you have to sort of play some kind of game. It's like a, a, like a sporting event to try to get around this person and they're going to try to get around you. And it's the fun of it. But um, if you don't sort of know what you want to um, get and stay conscious of it, then it can get really flat and stale and everybody's sort of doing the same line readings every night of the week and it doesn't have any life to it. But if you actually come out there with the intention of I'm here to get the money, I'm here to get the promotion, I'm here to get revenge, I'm here to get respect, I'm here to get, you know, I'm here to fool you or trick you in some way, whatever the goal is, and you're really watching and you're really listening, then there's a kind of a wonderful freshness that you can bring eight times a week. Um, I learned that from a wonderful actor named uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson that I did a play with when I was very young, just out of school. And, uh, and he said, uh, you can never give Tuesday's performance on Wednesday. And I, I didn't understand it at the time, but I learned it working with him <laughs> because he was the same, yet he was a little bit different because he was alive in the performance every night. I mean, like it wasn't, it wasn't like exactly the same. The same is true for camera acting because you have to do many, many takes of a scene over and over again during, during a you know, very condensed period of time, like you know three, four hours, uh, but you're doing a lot of takes. And if it's a movie, you might be doing a really lot of takes. And depending on how complicated it is or if there's a lot of machinery involved, uh, but whatever it is, you're gonna have to come back and come back. And there's not a lot of rehearsal, there's almost none. And so you sort of do it, you sort of, the rehearsal that happens, the rehearsal process that happens in a theater in, film acting kind of happens take by take. You sort of learn the scene take by take, but you do have to, the way you learn it is by really learning to be fully present and fully listening and fully receptive so that when something gets handed to you by the other actor, that you, you do something with it and then you return the ball and then they do something with that, whatever it may be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, it's very active yeah. in that sense. Even if you're just sitting at a table, not moving, it can still be a very active scene. A lot of things can happen in that time frame. Um, uh, it could be really fascinating. So anyway, that's our little sort of mini lesson on, on this. I'm gonna give you one last tip and then I'm gonna let you go, which is um, all of us have in our pocket one of these things. And this is an excellent tool for learning. Oh, it gave the time away, 347. Um, uh, it's an excellent way to learn camera technique because you can just set this thing up on video and, uh, and let it watch you do something like uh, fold your laundry or uh, something really simple, like just look out a window and see if there's anything out there that interests you. And just like let it film you for a few minutes and then look at that and you'll be surprised. Uh, you'll, you'll really sort of realize how very electrifying it is when people are just simply doing something, truly doing something, like really doing something. Uh, you can also set it up like you, if you want to call your your folks, call your parents, and then let that let that phone film you talking to your parents. I promise you, it will record some really interesting moments <laughs> on your face. That process, but what you start to learn is you start to learn the sort of parameters of film acting and how sometimes very small gestures can be hugely meaningful and can really tell the story of a scene. And it's it's really kind of it's a very cool thing. So, uh, so that said, I'm going to cut you guys loose. Thank you very much for participating in the uh, in the demonstration class we just did today on camera technique. And also, like everything else, you learn it by practicing it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.